Joel is waiting her turn to enter an exam. She's extremely nervous before it's time and infuriated at herself when it's over. She failed. Jan, another main character, also receives bad news before the summer holidays. He's a much better learner than Joel but he failed to get a scholarship. It turns out that Jan's stubbornness and his character worked against him this time. Although it helps him in his karate, which he teaches kids. Once he gets home, he reflects on something for a while. Then abruptly, he stands up and starts packing. Meanwhile, when Jewel gets home too and calls her mom, we understand that she has to make an extremely important medical decision, and she can't make it alone. She needs to see her boyfriend, Alex, who's in Portugal right now, and talk to him about it. It seems like both characters are about to leave their homes. They both have different reasons, but they still have something in common. Life hasn't been kind to any of them lately. Jewel has the worst of it, though. And so she takes the key to her RV, prepares for the long drive, and gets on with it, while Jan is late for his carpool. He is left astray at a gas station. Whether it is a coincidence or not, Jewel arrives at the same gas station to change the motor oil. She hears Jan asking other people there for a ride until everybody rejects him and sees him approaching her. The last thing she needs right now is a companion for the road. She hesitates for a while, but she can't help but give him that favor. And then again, it might be good for her after all, a person to speak to along the road. Jewel shows him around the RV, introduces herself, and they drive away. Moving on, they gradually get to know each other better through their small talk. However, their conversation jumps from being very ordinary to intimate pretty quickly. We understand that Jewel acquired this vehicle when her brother died and that Jan is planning to go to Spain by bus to visit his father. They are 24 years old, giving Jan some material to make a clumsy joke. He says that they have three years until they can follow the paths of Kurt Cobain, Janice Joplin, and such. To his the joke doesn't land. The last thing Jewel wants to hear about right now. Unfortunately, her silence isn't enough to hint at Jan to stop talking about it, so he continues, changing his tone. He starts judging people who take their own Jewel remains silent and locks her gaze on the road, but her lips get tighter and tighter as the stranger beside her continues talking from some kind of moral pedestal. Eventually, she can take no more of it. She almost explodes, and after a little while of disagreement, silence falls. And after that, Jewel apologizes to him, saying that she isn't quite in a position right now to gain new friends and engage in such social activities. So, she asks Jan to take another ride and drops him off at the first exit. Jan still can't make out the reason for her outburst, but just as the RV drives away, it dawns on him. Her brother. Her brother must have been the victim of the thing he talked on and on about. Jan feels terrible. And he feels even worse when he finds out that he left his phone in the RV. Extremely angry at himself, he runs after her, but Jewel doesn't notice him. The ride proved to be emotionally demanding from the very start for her as well. At night, Jan manages to join a trailer. The drivers decide to take a nap, so they park at a pit stop. He will spend the night there. Meanwhile, Jewel calls Alex and informs him that she's coming to speak with him. Alex doesn't seem very happy about it, however, before Jewel can object to the tone of his voice, there's a knock on her door. She opens it and sees a man standing there, all smiles and politeness. He introduces himself and praises her vehicle before he enters it without invitation. Jewel doesn't get suspicious, she follows him as the man continues talking about the model of her car. Finally, he asks for a glass of water, which Jewel fetches, hoping that afterward, he will leave, however, the man lingers on and on. Eventually, Jewel gets frustrated and rudely tells him to leave. Without a word, the man stands up and goes toward the door, but instead of leaving, he closes it. This is the moment when Jewel finally feels endangered. She threatens to call the police, but her phone is instantly snatched from her fingers. She has no means to protect herself. By some wild chance, in the next scene, Jan comes out of a public restroom and sees her RV. It seems like they both ended up at the same pit stop. He remembers his phone and approaches the vehicle. He hears voices coming out as Jewel nervously tells the man to stop. Jan knocks hard on the door and enters. He shouts at the man to get out of the car. This time, the man leaves, seeing that he cannot beat him in a fight. He is afraid of being arrested. Jewel, however, remembers her phone, which is still in his hands, and so Jan goes after him. The man doesn't know what to do, so he attacks Jan. They engage in a fight in which Jan seems a little superior, but Jewel is so nervous and panicked that she quickly gets her pepper spray and sprays them both with her shaky hands. The fight is over, the man flees, and Jan and Jewel are left alone. They both tend to each other's burned eyes. And for the first time, they had a pleasant conversation. Once they get back inside the RV, Jewel gets to know more about Jan's plans. It seems like he's going to see his biological father. He doesn't know him, hasn't met him yet, and didn't even know he existed until he was 17 years old. He grew up with his mother and stepfather. After talking briefly about it, Jewel apologizes for dropping him off earlier that day. Jan assumed it was right. She was infuriated because of what happened to her brother. Eventually, Jewel complains about her headache and tiredness, and Jan prepares to leave. This time, he's much more attentive toward Quez. But before he stands up, Jewel asks him to sleep here for the night. The man might return, and she will feel much safer if he sticks around. 
Jan smiles and agrees, of course. This request makes him feel worthy and happy. Both struggle to sleep, however. As they lay there silently, suddenly Jan asked Jewel if she had a favorite dream. This question makes her smile. It is a great question if you want to connect with somebody. And if you are lucky enough, your dreams might coincide. Jewel and Jan seem to be very lucky. It seems like they both fly in their dreams, and that is the time when they feel the freest and most powerful. They are delighted by this slight similarity between them. Finally, both feel that they are no longer strangers to each other, so they wish each other good luck and go to sleep. The next morning, when Jewel wakes up, she discovers that the bed behind her is empty. She assumes that he left, but before she can feel sorry about it, Jan knocks on her door. It seems like he was just having breakfast with the driver of the trailer. He has to leave, the truck must be in Paris by the end of the day. However, goodbye is not so easy. They say their farewells far too many times until it's obvious that none of them wants to part. But still, eventually, Jan walks off. Jewel looks at him go. She fights herself for a moment before calling him back, offering him a ride a little bit further than Paris. Immediately, of course, Jan agrees, and they continue the road trip together. The scenery that they drive through becomes more and more beautiful as Jewel takes the country road, and Jan feels more and more drawn to her. So, when their conversation lands on her plans, we can see how Jan's pleasant expression is flushed away from his face. Jewel is going to Portugal to see her boyfriend. After that, it's mostly Jewel who talks about Alex's profession, his field of study, and the reasons why half of Germany's population is single and alone. It's a disease, from her point of view, being alone, and Jan can do nothing more than agree bitterly. He's a little taken aback now and a little frustrated, so after Jewel starts blaming that disease on capitalism, he fails to stay silent and disagrees. Their argument lasts forever. Neither backs down, and it starts to feel like they will never manage to find common ground. However, suddenly, Jewel feels sick and needs to pull over. She quickly does so and manages to get out of the RV just in time before she vomits. She blames it on some food she probably ate yesterday. Neither one of them remembers the subject of their heated argument anymore as Jan cleans after her. Finally, Jewel proposes to go for a walk, and in the next scene, as they make their way through a forest, the subject of their last disagreement makes its way toward them. And so it is resumed, until the argument of whether capitalism is better or communism turns to what is better, cooperation or competition. And Jewel gives an example of their ride. She tells him that compassion was the main reason she took him for a ride. At this point, it's almost ridiculous how long the disagreement has lasted, so they already find it funny. After a while, however, it resumes and takes bad form. To prove his point, Jen uses the example of the man who tried to hurt Jewel earlier, and it upsets her. But eventually, hunger ends the disagreement this time. They get back, amused and in a great mood, cook some pasta, eat, and get back on the road again. Soon, after driving across Germany's countryside, they arrive at Cologne, the place where Jan has to catch the bus going to Spain. At first, they are happy to see the great cathedral, but Jewel realizes that their ways are about to separate just as she was getting used to him. And so she offers to get him another 300 miles further, not out of pity. They leave Germany without any more heated arguments and reach Belgium. That afternoon, they reach a camping site and stay there until the next morning. In the evening, they prepare supper and eat together. Jewel brings up the subject of the importance of cooperation and how the system forces the idea of competition upon the whole world, but they do not talk about it any further. Instead, Jewel asks him how he feels about meeting his biological father. He's not worried at all, as it seems. Even more, he feels inclined to tell Jewel the full story of how he found out about everything. His stepfather never showed any affection for him. He treated Jan with loathing and disgust. Little Jan thought that the fault was in him, but one time, at a family gathering, when he looked over the relatives of his stepfather, suddenly it dawned on him. These people were nothing like him, and he approached his mother and asked loudly and plainly. His mother's silence was enough, and so all of a sudden he understood that he only existed because her mother refused to abort him. The story is finished, and Jewel looks at him as if she's happy that her mother made that decision in the distant past. That night, Jewel looks inside the mirror and observes herself wearily, looking for a change in her body. Spending a lot of time with the company proved to be a cure for her. Jewel cannot even imagine how she could travel all alone. Loneliness would have suffocated her slowly, and she tells Jan all this before they go to sleep. Loneliness is an illness, and even one single gentle touch is enough to cure any stress. The next day, they say farewell to Belgium and enter France. When they make a stop in a little town and Jewel stays alone for a moment, she calls Alex. Jan soon comes back from the bank and finds her upset and nervous. It seems like Alex didn't take the news quite as well as she would have liked. Her boyfriend seems to be growing more and more distant from her, and hearing this news most likely won't help. She knows this, so she asks Jan to give her a moment. He does so, however, he gets back soon with Jewel's favorite food. Then he caresses her very gently and carefully on the shoulder. It is a single touch that is supposed to reduce her stress. And it does so. 
Half-jokingly, Jewel returns the favor, and even a small touch is enough to create a bond. With that, they continue their journey. After they cover some distance, Jan starts talking about his previous relationship. It sounds like the same story is about to be repeated in Jewel's life. Growing apart until you have nothing in common with another person Jan even feels like that girl never loved him in the first place, and no wonder. He says he has always had that problem, falling in love with people who do not fall for him back. Loving is easy, receiving it is a tough business. Especially when you don't even love yourself in the first place. Jewel is about to disagree. This is a tough subject for her too. But before they can discuss it any longer, champagne appears in Jan's hands, and it is over before it can begin. On their next stop, Jan begins talking about odd research that indicates that love and affection derive from physiology. Evolutionary mechanisms are the only ones that control who we are attracted to. It might seem like he's trying to justify himself by always choosing the wrong partners, but as he goes on and on about it, Jewel seems to be listening less and less. This is the subject that she doesn't even want to think about, so she urges him to get going. When they make their other stop in Verdun, it's Jewel who resumes this topic, talking about how love can't be reduced to hormones. She presents a great deal of argument to the point that Jan seems beaten. However, he decides to fight to the end. They have completely different views on relationships, however, they manage perfectly to listen to each other and respect each other's points of view. They seem to have grown in that regard since the beginning of their journey. As time goes on, they grow more and more familiar with each other. They start walking toward the RV when Alex calls. Jewel walks off, and from her exclamations and expressions, we understand that Alex regards the news as a problem. He will do everything to avoid taking responsibility, and Jewel begins to feel alone in this. Next, at a gas station, they fill up their tanks, and just as Jan is about to enter the shop to pay for it, an attractive woman walks out of it. Jan can't help but stare at her. Then he looks at Jewel, then at the woman again, and thinks to himself that probably Jewel was right in arguing that love isn't as simple as science suggests it is. While driving, they come up to a small lake and decide to have a picnic. For a while, the atmosphere and their conversation are pleasing. However, all goes upside down soon. Jewel proposes that there might be another reason aside from the biological one beneath Jan's tendency to get attracted toward the wrong people. It is the fear of letting someone get too close to you, to let someone get a good grasp of your true self. We notice that Jewel hit just the right spot, as Jan gets extremely agitated. He shoots question after question, asking why on earth that should be the case, but in this, he is only trying to cover his distress, and therefore the fact that it is true. He feels as if he's been stripped out of his clothes without his permission, so he stands up and walks to the shore. Jewel understands that she went too far. Regretting her words, she walks up to him and apologizes. But at this point, Jan is already quite stiff. Perhaps he fears he has let himself go too far with her. After closing some more distance, they make another stop at a bigger lake. It is an evening when Jewel confesses that she has the same problem with closeness too. She understands Jan perfectly, knowing that sharing part of yourself with someone is extremely dangerous, that shared part of you will never be safe, it will be completely in the hands of your partner. Getting close to someone is like risking your life. But Jewel then adds that there's nothing more beautiful than that risk. Humans are lonely in birth and death, but not in life. And a feeling of belonging to someone, feeling at home with someone is the best thing that life has to offer. It is no wonder it requires a huge risk on both sides. Jan agrees. He knows that Jewel is almost opening his mouth and telling his story. The next morning, after all the conversations and all the time spent with each other, they both discovered themselves, smiling while gazing at each other in secret. The process of their merging began long ago, and it still works its machines without them even knowing. That day, they came up to a monastery. After walking between its empty halls, they sit down near the altar, and the atmosphere inspires the next topic of discussion, marriage. People, religious or not, still to this day get married in a church, but as Jan argues, half of those marriages end in divorce, and the reason for the highest portion of them is infidelity, or a lack of desire. Soon their conversation takes on an unfitting form for church, so they get out into the courtyard and resume talking there. It seems like they have opposite viewpoints about this topic as well. Jan is all for polygamy, while Jewel argues against it. But neither this nor any other disagreement proves destructive, while their connection grows stronger and stronger. Moving forward, that connection is visible when. One morning, Jan sees Alex calling Jewel's phone. Without much consideration, he covers it with a pillow and makes his way toward the bathroom, where Jewel is doing her morning routine. When she gets back to the RV and takes her phone, she sees the missed calls, but instead of calling Alex back, she sighs, turns off her phone, and lies down. In the following days, they snitch corn together, swim together, take photos together, and visit cities and ancient fortresses together. Jan feels great and terrible at the same time when he gazes at Jewel without her knowing. He's already well aware of what is happening inside his heart but cannot do anything about it. Soon, after driving between woods, they reach the sea. There is something about it that makes them run toward it quickly. Jewel plunges into the water and urges Jan to follow, but the latter has already grown very fond of looking at her from a distance. For Jan, the view of the unending waters is much more magnificent with Jewel in it. There, on the beach, they smoke a 
and this action makes them talk about the substances that alter their consciousness. Jen reckons that our inner commentator never ceases to talk and talk, and that is why humans need to shut it down every once in a while. But Jewel argues that there are plenty of other, less harmful ways that do the same thing. Besides, the commentator is a mere commentator and nothing more. Our real selves lie somewhere else, deeper into our essence, where words cannot reach. And while shutting the commentator down, harm that true self in the process as well. Jewel searches in her head for some better way to shut down the everlasting mumbling of someone in their heads and finally comes up with it. Run to the sea and leap inside with your clothes on. And then, after they dry themselves, their ways separate. Jewel goes grocery shopping, while Jan returns to swim some more. And with that, they finally have a chance to do something alone after so long. Both feel an odd, empty space, and know now what the presence of the other is worth. They have time to reflect on things alone. The next day, Jan wakes up and finds himself alone. In the following scene, we see him in a swimsuit approaching Jewel holding a surfing board. Jan lies to her then that he only wants to try surfing for the first time and borrows the board from Jewel. She tells him what to do and sends him into the waves, shouting from a distance, giving him pointers, and screaming in astonishment when she sees how well Jan does everything until finally he returns and Jewel realizes that she's been fooled. Then, breathing rapidly, they both sit down on the sand to get dry. Jan should be breathing rapidly, but Jewel's heavy breathing is coming from somewhere else. She looks at him, and something snaps inside, comes to life, and urges her to get closer. Jan does the same until both suddenly find themselves leaning closer and closer. But at the exact moment when their lips should touch, they stare away and their cheeks receive a kiss. It is enough, though. They continue traveling that afternoon and said hello to Spain. Soon they enter the coastal city where Jan's father is. At some point, Jewel stops the car, allowing him to prepare. John seems extremely anxious. His expression becomes restricted and colorless, and his motions are rigid. Finally, Jewel pulls off at a marina where Jan's father works. Jan comes down nervously and gets to the roof of the RV to check if he's there. But he isn't, and they drive off to another marina. From the distance, Jan finally sees his father. Seeing his father for the first time is more frightening than he thought. Suddenly, all expressions are flushed from Jan's face, and the desire to go up to him disappears. Then they walk around to see that man from another angle, and something manages to make Jan smile. His father looks happy. He says so, but the smile stays on his face only for so long. Soon they go back, and for the rest of the day, Jan is completely swept away by deep thoughts. He tries to explain what is going on inside his head to Jewel at night. Finally, he concludes that he'll never have a father, and that is all right. He realizes now that he should quit looking for something outside himself and turn his gaze in the opposite direction. Jewel is relieved and happy for him. She truly cares for Jan, and listening to him and making the best decision makes her want to embrace him firmly. And with that, they continue traveling through Spain. Jewel should take him to see the cave paintings, then, make him see what a cooperating society can create. The hands that painted those scenes belonged to the first civilization that had time to do art. Jewel seems to be getting closer to changing Jan's opinions and his vector towards solitude. Continually traveling, they come up to a magnificent sight and decide to go for a hike. Then, crossing a freezing cold stream, Jewel stumbles and falls. She's all wet and trembling by the evening when they get back to their RV. She strips off her wet clothes quickly as she gets inside and asks Jan to warm her up. This is a dangerous path, of course. Soon they find themselves touching each other passionately. Their breathing gets heavier, and their lips get closer, but they fail to touch again. Jewel returns to her senses then and asks him whether they should do it or not. Jan isn't quite so sure that they should, so instead they get under the blanket, avoid eye contact, and get silent for a while. The state of their relationship is obvious to both, and they both know what it is that they feel. It's love, and Jewel decides that there is no need to lock it inside. So she lets the words come out, telling Jan how she feels. Jan feels the same, of course, even the radical polygamous lone wolf turned out to be completely helpless in front of love. From their following conversation, however, we understand what their plan is. They want to remain strong and not yield to it. The love that they feel attempts to submit them to its will, but Jan and Jewel won't give up without fighting. And they do fight, not letting their lips touch for quite a long time, trying to set out the fires by the mere closeness of their lips, but one can only endure the urge to love for so long, and they are no exception at all. Jewel feels the need to tell him the whole truth afterward. She gets especially nervous, her lips get tighter and tighter as if not to let it out, but she knows she must tell him the secret now. And so she tells Jan she's pregnant. He has no idea how to respond at first but soon realizes that comforting her is the only way to go. It is enormous news for him, but does it truly change everything? He fetches some tea for Jewel and listens to her as she tells him the rest, that Alex doesn't want the kid, that her mother urges her to have an abortion, but the truth is, she has no idea anymore what she wants. Jewel has some pills that would end her pregnancy, and she has two more weeks to consider them. Jewel wakes up first the next morning and sneaks outside to go for a walk. She is on the verge of making the most important decision of her life. Enormous space, sunlight, cool air, and the immensity of nature are all she needs now. And so, finally, Jewel makes up her mind. When she finally gets back to the RV, she finds Jan making breakfast. 
And then Jewel brought light to her decision. She will have this baby. A broad smile spread across Jan's face. She's so proud of her decision, and he tells her how great it is. Jewel is relieved. Her face opens up, and she feels an overwhelming joy swallowing her whole. Jan's support is immeasurable in this regard for Jewel. But there is no need for such language on this kind of occasion, so they make breakfast, eat, pack up, and resume their journey across Europe. Their relationship has drifted drastically. Now they mean much more to each other than they did at the start of their journey. In the next scene, Jewel comes out of the shower, holding a tower that has blood on it. Something is wrong, so they go to the doctor in the nearest city to check it. From the gynecologist's office, Jewel comes out dumbfounded and changed, as if she lost something immeasurably important. Slowly, she walks up to Jan and tells him what the doctor said. It seems like she's not pregnant anymore. As the doctor said in his broken English, the egg didn't stick to the uterus, and as a result, her pregnancy didn't continue. It is a truly grieving moment. They are both silent for the rest of the day as they wander around the coastal city. Grieving thoughts roam in Jewel's head at night too. One can only be happy when one accepts the temporary nature of everything around him, relationships, happiness, misfortunes, and even one's life. Everything might be over tomorrow, and if you fail to make your peace with that notion, life will turn to torment. That's what she thought about that night. Their next stop is their final stop. It's the city where Alex is. Jewel stops the RV near a small cafe and tells Jan that she'll go alone from now on. Jan submits and tries to give her power to go by for the rest of the day by kissing her firmly. But Jewel avoids him and apologizes after. She needs to talk to Alex first, she needs to consider everything she needs to think about. So Jan gets out of the RV with his huge backpack without looking back, but Jewel runs after him. If she doesn't return to him, this will not be the way they say goodbye. So she embraces him and tells him that she must go now. Jan lets her go, sits down in the cafe, and starts waiting. Time passes slowly. Jan waits till he can no longer stay awake. The owner of the cafe asks him to leave when it's already too late. He asks Jan if he needs a room for the night, but Jan has no intention to give up on her. He leaves the cafe and gets out into the empty streets. And after wandering around for a while, he sits down on a cold stone and starts fighting to remain awake. But the empty, hollow streets give him no hope of Jewel's arrival, so his eyes shut and he drifts into sleep until a sudden flash of light and a rumble of an RV engine wake him up. It's Jewel, of course. Jan leaps up quickly and runs to her, still unable to understand whether it is a dream or not. If it is, after all, a dream, then it better continue for a lifetime. 